How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Collecting Collectors Editions. And today, we're going to be going over something that, uh... I've never really bought into this whole gimmick, um, of, like, video game style. Uh, I was really into a certain version of it, uh, The Last of Us. The Last of Us to me was an amazing game all around, um, even though I would still classify it in this genre. But I figure with this coming out and me being able to get my hands on it, I would go ahead and grab it and give it a try. And we are going to be going over the Hella Edition, which is the Collector's Edition of Dead Island 2 for the PS5. So I never played the first Dead Island. Um, I never played uh, like Dead Alive or any of those other games. I did try to play, um, oh, I, I can't even remember the name of it right now, but it was like a, a blast your way through and survive four player co-op uh, that came out right around the time that the Xbox X and the PS5 came out. Um, I'll think of it here in a minute. But we're going to go ahead and crack this open and see what we got inside this bad boy. Got my trusty Kershaw. And uh, we're going to go ahead and cut her open. All right. Go right down the line. See if I can. I don't want to cut the box. It's got like a cool plastic uh, cover, uh, like a slip cover. That goes over it. Yeah. See what I mean? That's pretty cool. And then it comes in a standard hard case box. Looks to be, it's supposed to be like an ammo crate or something. Now this isn't like your standard collector's edition. Um, it, it, it was pretty pricey for a supposed collector's edition. But uh, let's go ahead and see what we got in The first thing that we got is a couple of pens, which um, I rather enjoy these because I have a, a, a National Metal Day uh, handkerchief thing that we got at a concert a long time ago. And I use that as my pen collector. So anytime like games or anything come with pens, uh, I always put them on that, and it's like three quarters of the way done right now. So the next thing that we got is this right here. It's a little envelope with something in it. Oh. It's like... So I got a little iron-on patch that says Infernal. And then what looks to be like a tarot cards like dead island tarot cards maybe yes they are they're tarot cards from characters in the game so the first one that we got they're pretty cool they got cool little designs is the strength character and it's got the number eight on it and then we have the hermit with number nine And then the lovers with number six. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune with the number 10. Uh, the Emperor with the number four. And the Tower with number 16. So I wonder if there's going to be more of those that come out over time. <clears throat> we have what looks to be a map of the Venice Beach area. Um, I'm not going to open this up because it looks to be sealed in here. I usually don't like to open these up. Just because if I, I'm more than likely, I'm not going to hang them up unless it's something I really enjoy, like a, 
uh, Sekiro or something like that. And then we have the uh, the game <clears throat> and it's hard case. Sorry, my voice is a little scratchy right now. I mean, I do give it. I think all collector's editions or deluxe editions should come with a steel case. And it didn't come with a secondary plastic case either. So I do give it that right there. Um, I mean, it's not really anything special. If you're not like a diehard fan or anything like that, I would definitely say give it a hard pass. Um, the only reason I mainly got it is... Of course, for this right here, the collecting collector's editions, I try to get my hands on as many collector's editions as I possibly can. So I can open them up for you guys. So you can see if uh, you guys want them or not. So I, I'm used to being in an age where collector's editions, like with statues and all that stuff, cost, you know, in the range of $120. This was $100. <clears throat> But I also have to take into account that the economy has gone up dramatically and video games have not gone up in price uh, that much at all. I mean, I remember original Nintendo games costing $49.99 to $59.99, depending on some whatever location. And it was the same price for a long time, going through Super Nintendo to Nintendo 64 and PlayStation and Xbox they always have roughly stayed the same price. It hasn't been up until recently when games have started costing uh, for base copies 70 and $80. So to get this for just 20 bucks more is, um, it, it, in overall standards, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, typically for games like this i would expect a bigger collector's edition to get released but um from what i've been hearing collector's editions are dying out people aren't getting them anymore for whatever reason i don't know why uh maybe it's because the market has been oversaturated with them i do wish that this is your your pretty much standard deluxe edition now is some map poster with some pins and some form of, of card, whether it's a trading card or a tarot card. I feel like quite a few games have come out with tarot cards lately, uh, like uh, Borderlands, uh, Tiny, well, not, sorry. Yeah, even Borderlands, I think I got some tarot cards in that too. But the Borderlands 3 and uh, um, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, like all these games are releasing tarot cards for whatever reason. And I feel like it's become a pretty generic, uh, like way of producing collector's editions. They're all doing the same thing. They're not really doing anything different. At least if you had the statues, you had some cool statue to to put up in your room somewhere. I'm not really gonna do anything with a few tarot cards, you know. It's not really something I can display um, and look at and enjoy, you know what I mean? These are probably gonna go in a drawer with the rest of the trading cards and tarot cards and, and all that stuff that I get from, and postcards that I get from all these other collector's editions. Um, I don't really feel like people are trying to step outside the box. Well, I don't feel like developers are trying to step outside the box when it comes to differentiating their uh, deluxe or collector's edition to somebody else's deluxe or collector's edition. I feel like they're all kind of cookie cutter and they just change up the image a little bit. Like they've all got the same press and then they just modify the image slightly and bam, mass produce it and push it out. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things too that's pushing people to not get collector's editions anymore. It's why would I want 30 sets of tarot cards or postcards or trading cards from all these collector's editions? I'm not really getting anything that stands out. And that's my biggest thing with this right here is you're not really getting anything that stands out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool to have it's it's nice that the option is there for people who really love the games but um, 
I really do feel like the deluxe and collector's editions are um, a thing of the past and they're starting to die out because every single deluxe and collector's edition is starting to become like this. Um, there's nothing to even show off here. Um, and I think it's a pretty poor excuse of a deluxe edition. Uh, with that being said, I, I'm not going to say that any diehard fan shouldn't get this. But at the same time, you can definitely live without this stuff because it's not going to be anything that you're going to be able to display. Or I mean, you're not going to hang the tarot cards on your wall. Um, yeah, you get a couple of pins that you can put on your backpack or something like that. But for the most part, there's nothing really spectacular about this. I'm glad I was able to get it so I can show it off for you guys. But at the same time, I'm I'm not really impressed with it. There's... Nothing out of the ordinary in here. Just your standard cookie cutter deluxe edition. So I'm probably going to give this a 6 out of 10. Um, the stuff in it is cool, but there's no, um, for a franchise as creative as this, uh, from everybody that I've talked to that's played these games, the franchise is very um, creative and, and pioneered a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, I would do expect more from this. So, um it's up to you guys. Um, it's out there. And uh, that's all I have to say for right now. So there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoy. And I will catch you later.